Okay, so we're looking at 2.5 survey problems, and we have a couple of objectives. Our first objective is we want to use Venn diagrams to visualize the survey's results, and two, we want to use survey results to complete Venn diagrams and answer questions about the survey. Okay? So we have our uh, blood sample, right? So the results of surveys are summarized in this figure, all right? So here in A, we have the set of students willing to donate blood. It's always very important to define your set. And then B is the set of students who are willing to serve breakfast to the donors, right? And so <clears throat> here's set A. And in region one, right, we have 370 students. And these students, these 370, are in the set of willing to donate blood, but not in the set of willing to serve breakfast. So these are students that are only donating blood and not serving breakfast. These 120 students right here, they are in the intersection of donate blood and serve breakfast. So these students are willing to donate blood and serve breakfast. These 220 students in Region 3, they are only willing to serve breakfast and not donate blood, okay, because they're outside of the donate blood intersection. And in Region 4, you have 240 students who are neither willing to donate blood nor um, serve breakfast, okay? So these are the ones that responded no to each, all right? So how many students are willing to donate blood? Well, that would be all of the students in set A, okay? And so the cardinal number for set A is going to be the 370 students in region 1 and the 120 students in region 2. And so if you add those up, you're going to get uh, 400 and 90 students. Okay? Now, how many are willing to donate blood but not serve breakfast? Well, that's just the region 1, and so the cardinal number there is going to be 370. And how many weren't willing to do either? And of course, that's the region 4, and that's the 290 that we already talked about. And so you can see that a Venn diagram makes it very easy to visualize the results of a survey and figure out um, maybe percentages or the number of participants that were willing to um, do certain activities, okay? And so, or have certain opinions. And that makes us happy when we can do that, okay? So what's the methodology then to solving a survey problem. All right, so here's the methodology. Um, you're going to use the survey's description to define sets and draw a Venn diagram. Okay, so you're going to use the description to get well-defined sets to draw the Venn diagram. Okay, and labels are really important here. You're going to use the survey's results to determine the cardinality for each region in the Venn diagram. That was what I did. We, we used the cardinality of each of those sets. So you're going to start with the intersection of the sets. And you saw that was uh, um, what we would do, the innermost region and work outward. Um, and then use the completed Venn diagram to answer the problem's questions. All right. So this is really straightforward. Basically, we want to draw, right? We want to start with the intersections filling in the cardinality and then we're going to use the completed Venn diagram to answer the questions. So that's the the process that we're going to go through. Okay? So here's our example. All right. Now this is a word problem, right? This class is mostly word problems, so <clears throat> A survey is taken that asks 2,000 randomly selected U.S. and Mexican adults the following question. Do you agree or disagree that the primary cause of poverty is societal injustice? All right. So we're asking a question. Do you agree or disagree that the primary cause of poverty is societal injustice? And we have two different groups here. Okay. So I have the U.S. as a group. And I have Mexicans as a group, 
Okay, and then I have one question that I'm asking both of these groups. Do you agree or disagree you know, that the primary cause of poverty is societal injustice? All right, and so this is going to be sort of our set question right here. Do you agree? Okay, and we're going to end up with two sets because I have the U U.S. citizens that are asking this question and Mexican citizens that are answering this question. So basically we're going to end up with two sets and we're only going to put the agrees in those sets. All right, And this is kind of how you do it. You have to look at the grammar of the sentence, figure out you know, what you can make a yes-no question for your sets and go from, go from there. All right? Now we do have some results. The results showed that 1,060 people agreed with the statement. We have 400 Americans agreed with the statement. All right. If half the adults surveyed were Americans, all right, and and they're, I, I don't like the fact that they've changed this, but the Americans are the the U.S. citizens, right? Now it did did tell us that it asked 2,000 randomly selected people, and half of them were Americans, right? So off to the uh, off to the side here, I'm going to put. U.S. is going to be equal to a thousand, and Mexican is going to be equal to a thousand. Okay, so I do know those two things. I also know that there were U.S. that agreed. So that's the intersection of U.S. and agree is the four hundred, and that comes from here. Okay, that's going to be equal to four hundred. And then, of course, agreed with the statement, agreed with the statement is going to be equal to the 1,060 respondents right there. So a little over uh, half there. All right? So this is the idea. Okay? You have an intersection here. You have the, Mex the number of Mexicans and the number of U.S. Those are our two sets. And we're just looking to put agrees in each of those sets. So, you know, how many Mexicans agreed with the statement? How many Mexicans disagreed with the statement? Well, we need to draw a Venn diagram. All right, so let's do that. Okay. And here it is. All right. Here's the number of U.S. And here's the agree. Okay. Now, I probably would have done U.S. and Mexican in the agrees. Um, the Venn diagram would look a little bit different, uh, but the book has chosen to do it like this. All right, so just to be consistent. So we're going to define the sets in the Venn diagram. The set U.S. is the set of all the Americans surveyed, okay? And the set A is the set of people surveyed who agreed with the statement. And so... In region one, what is region one? Region one is U.S. citizens who disagree with the statement, right? So you have U.S. citizens and they disagree with the statement. In region two, you have U.S. citizens who agree with the statement. In region three, what are you going to have? Well, if you're not a U.S. citizen and you're part of this survey, then you must be a Mexican citizen. But you're still in the agree category. So you're in the agree category, right, set in region three. And then in region four, you have Mexican citizens that disagree with the statement. Well, I want you to think about this, right? Question A asked how many Mexicans agreed, and question B asked how many uh, Mexicans disagreed. So really I'm looking for the cardinality of region 3 and the cardinality of region 4 for this particular um, picture. All right. So that's what we want to do now. We are going to determine the cardinality for each region in the Venn diagram starting with the innermost region.
alright? And so if we remember, our picture looks like this. Here's US. Got a nice big circle, right? <clears throat> Here's A4 agree. Another nice big circle. Alright? And this here in region two, what does that represent? Well, that represents US that agree, right? So what do we know back from the problem? We know back from the problem, because we already figured it out, that US citizens that agree was 400. And so we can actually go ahead and put that in right here. So there's the 400. All right. <clears throat> now that leaves US citizens that disagree. Now, I don't know the number of US citizens that disagree. Okay, but I do know that there are a thousand US citizens altogether and that 400 of them agree. So that means that this whole set US has to add up to a thousand, right? So a thousand US citizens minus the 400 that agree will leave 600 that disagree and that will be what's in region 1. So the 600. And now the 600 plus the 400 gives you the 1,000 in the U.S. Now, what about agreed? Well, I have 400 over here, but how many Mexicans agree? Well, I, I don't actually know how many Mexicans agree, but I do know that there were 1,060 that agreed altogether. So that means this whole set has to add up to 1,060. Okay, so now we want to figure out the agree. There are 1060 in the agree. I'm going to subtract 400 off. So 0, 6, 10 from 660, right? So that means that there are 660 Mexicans that agree with the situation because they're outside of American so they have to be Mexican and they're still in agreement and now the total amount of agreement is the uh, 1060 now you're thinking oh well I must be done right well not quite because remember this is our universal set I'm gonna cheat here I'm gonna use this frame as our universal set and that means that this is region 4 is outside of US and outside of agree well, who is in Region 4? Well, that would be Mexicans that disagree. Okay? Well, how do I figure that out? Well, I know that I have 1,000 Mexicans that I surveyed. And I know that Region 3 and Region 4 is made up of Mexicans. And so the total of Region 3 and Region 4 has to add up to a thousand. And so if you take a thousand from 660, you end up with 340. And now region three and region four will add up to a thousand. Region two and region one will add up to a thousand. And region two and region three will add up to 1060. And so this is our Venn diagram. And now we can actually go ahead and answer the question from A and B. And so the question in A is how many Mexicans agreed with the statement? And so the number of Mexicans that agree with the statement comes from region 3. That would be 660. And then the how many of Mexicans disagreed with the statement? Here, let me straighten it up. And that would be in Region 4, and that would be 340. Okay. This concludes our uh, example. It's really easy when you draw the Venn diagram, and that makes us happy. And this is one of the places where you can actually use mathematics, all right, um, is to 
answer survey questions, figure out how respondents feel, and have a nice way of visualizing the data. Alright, this concludes uh, the chapter on sets.